At this point in my life, most of my friends from college and from my 20s all have children. So I have spent a lot of time over the years being the uh, extra adult at the table at Applebee's. I'm the one who has to get the, the server to pull the chair from another table and put it at the end of the booth. And then I'm sitting there. And so I have been to quite a few dinners with overtired children. I actually know what that is without having to be a parent. But my friends who are parents taught me something that many of you have known for a long time because of your own experience as being a parent. When a child is overtired, do not try to use reason with them. It's just not the right approach. So a great example is if a child loves their toys, you buy them these lovely toys, and then at one point in the day, the child goes, I don't want to play with my toys. Don't use reason. It's not about reason. You just need to figure out, sweetie, when's the last time you ate? Maybe it's time to go down for a nap. Always ask, are they hungry or are they tired? Because the solution is not with the toys. It's, are they hungry? Are they tired? And the problem is, they'll fake you out. They'll, they'll tell you it's not true, because you'll say, oh, I, I know, I know what it is. He needs to go down for a nap. She hasn't slept all day. So then you'll say, let's, let's lay down and have a nice nap. I don't wanna go to sleep. But don't believe them. <laughs> Parents know this. It's funny because when you have a child in full tantrum, you wind up saying things you, you never would say, things that don't make any sense, like, but sweetheart, you like chicken nuggets. Things that normally would not make any sense at all. And I have to say that I am no better than a child when I'm really hungry. That's, that's why we've developed the term in our culture, hangry. Hangry is something that all of us get, and we don't make our best decisions, and that is what we are hearing about in the first reading from the book of Exodus. You know this story. All I needed to do was tell you the word manna, and you would have been able to come up with most of the outline of that story. Oh, yeah, the time that they were in the desert and God gave them manna. But I think it's very, very important for us to look at the context of this story and to listen today really closely to what the Israelites, our ancestors, said. Because it's very easy for us to say, oh, that's them, that's long ago, and that's a different, no, 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 that's us, that's our family, that is our exact family of faith, those are our ancestors, those are our great-great-grandparents, so they're a lot like us. We're going to recognize ourselves in them. Because here's what happened. If you turn the book of Exodus back just a few pages, it's what we were hearing about a couple of weeks ago. They were slaves in Egypt. Pharaoh was merciless to them. Do you remember, did you see the movie, The Ten Commandments, where he says, double the bricks and take away the straw. Give them 40 lashes. They were just oppressed to the max. And they begged God on their knees, please get us free from slavery. We beg you. So God did. Through the Red Sea, God led them on this miraculous act of freedom. Every one of their prayers was answered. Every, every single thing that they hoped would happen would happen. And did you hear what they said to Moses today? They got hungry and they got tired. So imagine this same scene being moved to a booth at Applebee's. <laughs> I want to be a slave again. I hate it here. That's literally what they said. In Egypt, we got to eat breadsticks. They begged on their knees to be led out of Egypt. And then when God did, they complained. So Moses, like a good father, says, oh, are you hungry? Are you tired? Because that's literally what the problem was. Don't reason with them. Just ask, are you hungry or are you tired? But they'll fake you out just like children. So God says, they miss breadsticks? Here you go. Gave them bread from heaven. And did you hear what they said when they saw it? What is this? Literally, that's the exact quote from the scripture. What is this? Because they didn't recognize it. So let us remember that the stories from the Old Testament 
are very illuminating for us about our own lives. And that's why it's very appropriate that the church on the second week of our summer series on the Eucharist gives us this reading with what Jesus said in the sixth chapter of John. Because what we're hearing is toddlers can get away with tantrums and and children sometimes sulk. But for people who are adults on a faith journey, we need to be a little little harder with ourselves about that. We need to give ourselves some tough love and lay some groundwork so that we recognize that when it's happening and don't fall into the trap. So take the story we just heard and put it just to the side and now turn to Jesus saying to the crowds who came running after him after he had multiplied the loaves and the fishes for him and fed them. And they said, here you are. Why did you walk away from us? We want more of what you have. And he said to them the equivalent of this. You're here looking for chicken nuggets and a bedtime story. But I want to give you something better than that. Stop chasing me down for chicken nuggets. I want you to develop a taste for something better. He said, if you need chicken nuggets right now, in a few hours, you're going to need candy. And that's going to be the rest of your life, chasing after one thing after another. I want you to start hungering for something deeper. I want you to start developing a taste for what I can really give you. And what he really wants to give us is what God gave the Israelites. Freedom. True freedom. True spiritual freedom. The freedom to follow God fully and wholly, no matter what circumstance that we're in. So Jesus says, if you receive me as your food, then you will never hunger or thirst again. You won't be looking for chicken nuggets. You're not going to be hangry because the deepest hunger will be fed. So he's saying, receive me, receive my teaching, receive my forgiveness, receive my guidance, receive my friendship. Don't keep looking for the next thing to fill your belly. Receive me. So... It reminded me of something that a spiritual author once wrote that said, whenever you get a mouthful of ocean water, you know it's the ocean because it tastes like salt. And whenever you get a taste of the truth, you know it's the truth because it tastes like freedom, spiritual freedom, the total availability to just know that God is with you and that all is well and that you can be led. It is easy for us to hear the story of our ancestors saying, we want to be slaves again in Egypt, and and laugh at them. It's natural, and it's probably appropriate, because it's really a silly thing to ask for. It's completely illogical. But it is also important for us to recognize that we are those people, that's us, that's our family, and that we also tantrum when things get hard. This story came to life for me in an unpleasant way, as it did for all of us last year. Because if you put yourself back in mid-March of 2020, we begged God for our lives. We begged God for our lives. We begged God for our jobs. We begged God to save the world. Begged God on our knees. You remember, we were terrified. And in the time that has passed since then, we've, we've had some losses. In our two parishes, we lost about 20 people to COVID. But if you're sitting here right now, you and I weren't one of them. We weren't. So our, our prayers were answered. We survived. But do you remember what happened just a couple of months after we begged God, when we got a little bit tired? Did you see the videos of the behavior that was happening in Starbucks? and in Walmart all over the country. Did you see it? It probably wasn't you, and it probably wasn't me, but it was us, it was our family, throwing hot cups of coffee in the face of people at Starbucks, terrorizing the old ladies who work part-time as greeters at Walmart, terrorizing them with our outbursts, with our tantrums. It's the same, it's the same family behavior. We did the same thing. And so what we're being called to hear today is, are you willing 
to not spit the manna that God gives us back in God's face, but to just allow ourselves to really be fed, not by our need of the moment or of the hour, but for our true need, for what our soul needs. Are we willing to hunger for something more deeply? Are we willing to put our soul where our taste buds usually would be and ask ourselves, what does my soul want? What does my soul want to taste? You maybe have never made the connection before between the manna and the sacrament of the Eucharist that we celebrate, but you know the church is, has little reminders for us all the time. In the, in the Eucharistic prayer I'll pray today, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to come down like the dew fall, because that's how manna appeared at the camp, with the dew fall. So there's all of these connections that are helping us to recognize that we're supposed to hunger for something more. So before we move on to week three next week, it's a good time to ask ourselves, are, are you with Jesus? Am I with Jesus with where he's taking us so far? Are, are we understanding that there is this this hunger in us, this this hole in us that can only be filled by God. So if we're always going to be throwing chicken nuggets and candy at it, it's never going to get filled. Can we recognize that we can never get enough of what fails to satisfy? If we're willing to accept what he's saying so far, he's going to take us a little more deeply next week. He's going to challenge us a little more. But he's saying to us today, All you need to know right now is that what you think you're hungry for is not going to last. You'll be hungry all over again in a few hours. So, So start to identify what you're really hungry for, he says. And then come and get it.